Welcome to God's Word Fellowship. I'm Gerald Santiago. This is the Watchman Prayer Teachings. Let's pray. Father, we come to you in the name of our Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you so much for your holy written word. Father, we thank you. Your words are truth. Father, we pray you teach us your word today. Father, we pray you grant us wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and uh, skill and revelation in prayer and in your covenant. And uh, to intercede and to function as watchmen. Father, we pray you lead us, guide us, teach us, train us, and help us. Father, we thank you for strengthening our prayer lives. And Father, we thank you for making us effective in our prayer. Father, we thank you for training us to pray and receive answers for ourselves and uh, for others. And for our city, for our nation, for the body of Christ and the kingdom of God. Father, we thank you for your mighty marvelous help for us. Father, you are so good, so great and so awesome. Father, we pray you grant us word into your season. Father, we pray you grant us answers and solutions. And Father, we pray you stretch out your hand to heal people. Father, we pray you do signs and wonders and miracles for people. We ask in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray your anointing break every yoke, remove every burden, break every chain. Father, we pray your healing anointing drive out every form of sickness and disease and remove every pain, heal every broken heart. And Father, we pray for your strength for people. Father, we pray for your strength for people in their spirit, soul, body, strength to move forward forward, strength to win, strength to triumph, strength to overcome. And Father, we pray for your comfort for your people and your peace. Father, you are good and your mercy endures forever. Father, your love endures forever. Father, you care for us, you love us and we appreciate it, we thank you for it, we praise you for it. Father, you are good, you are awesome, you are wonderful and you are mighty. Father, you are El Shaddai. Nothing is impossible for you. Father, you are the Most High. And Father, we come to you for uh, the parliamentary elections in our nation, India. Father, we pray you grant us an excellent Prime Minister and excellent MPs according to your heart and your will. People who fear you, who are able, who will do your will, who lead and guide this nation according to your plans and your purposes and your ways. And Father, we pray you stop the wicked from coming to positions of power, authority and influence. Father, we pray you remove the wicked from positions of power, authority and influence. Father, we pray the rod of the wicked does not rule over our lands. Father, we thank you for your glorious, glorious help for us. Father, you are the great and the most high. Nothing is impossible for you. Father, you set up kings and you remove kings. Father, we thank you for your awesome help for us. Father, we pray for your mighty protection upon our nation and to the election process. And Father, we pray for your peace and unity in our nation, in every state, every city, every village, every part of our nation. Father, let your peace cover the entire nation. Let people be united. Let them not be divided based on language, religion and caste. Father, we thank you for your glorious help. In the name of our Lord Jesus, we bind the works of the devil against the elections in our nation. In the name of our Lord Jesus, we bind every work of the devil, every weapon of the devil concerning our elections. In the name of our Lord Jesus, we speak peace upon our nation. Father, we thank you for your glorious help. Father, we pray that you take care of every aspect of this election. We give everything into your hands, the election commission, the people who are involved in the election, the equipments that are being used, the voting process, the counting, the tabulation, the publishing of results, the election schedule, every aspect of it. Father, we pray that you provide protection so that people can, can come and exercise their right to vote in, in a safe atmosphere so that they can do it peacefully. Father, we thank you for your marvelous, marvelous help. Father, you are good, you are great, and you are greatly to be praised. Father, we also pray that you grant USA an excellent president according to your heart and your will. Father, we thank you for your marvelous help for USA. Father, we thank you, you heard and answered our prayers. Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. You know, it's so important that we pray for uh, the leadership of our nation. 
right we are commanded in the bible that we should pray right first of all for kings and those in authority and this election is very important right because this is where we choose the people who are going to rule in the next 5 years hallelujah and um it's the responsibility of the christians to watch over this election and to pray concerning the election so that the will of god will be accomplished and god would grant us leaders uh, who will lead and guide this nation according to his heart and his will hallelujah hallelujah to jesus it's mighty important that we pray and also i encourage you to continue to uphold uh, the uh, continue to pray for the elections in usa right particularly the presidential election right uh please to remember to pray for it continue to pray for it it's so very important that we you know support our brethren who live in um, usa and it is so important for the kingdom of god this you know, the leader of usa is mighty important for the purposes of the kingdom of god right and it's 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 uh, it's our responsibility to pray for it hallelujah hallelujah to jesus all right let's um go to a text today go with me to isaiah Uh, hallelujah to Jesus. We are talking about uh, transformation and particularly we began to speak about covenant and uh, we also in the previous message we started speaking about the prayer of a covenant man. Hallelujah. Uh, let's read our text first of all and then we will continue our study. Go with me to Isaiah 62. Hallelujah to Jesus. We'll begin from verse 1. For Zion's sake I will not hold my peace and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burns and the gentiles shall see your righteousness and all kings your glory and thou shalt be called by a new name which the mouth of the Lord shall name thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God thou shalt no more be turned for second neither shall your land any more be termed desolate but thou shall be called hepzibah and your land beulah for the lord delighteth in thee and your land shall be married for as a young man marrieth a virgin so shall your sons marry thee and as the bridegroom rejoiceth over the bride so shall your god rejoice over thee great plans great thoughts in the heart of god concerning zion but how did god accomplish this what is the method he used look at this verse 7 i have set watchmen upon your walls o jerusalem he didn't say i i'm going to send an army no he said i have set watchmen upon your walls o jerusalem see this is how god's plans get implemented on the planet earth okay right? he will reveal his will to his people who pray right and when his people who are called by his name who are in covenant with him pray his plans he will listen to their prayer and in answer to their prayer he will fulfill his plan on the earth that's his way of w- working right this is a, his method of operation let's read verse 6 and 7 as it watchmen upon your walls o jerusalem which shall never hold their peace day nor night you that make mention of the lord keep not silence and give him no rest till he establish till he make jerusalem a praise in the earth right he wants you to take hold of his plan see that's why you need to spend time with god in prayer and in studying his word and in communion with him because that's where you will get to know what's in his heart and that's where you will know what he wants you to pray about right hallelujah it's in his presence that he opens up his heart hallelujah to jesus so i encourage you to spend time with him the more you do the more you will know his heart the more accurate your prayer will be and more powerful it will be hallelujah hallelujah to jesus all right now let's uh, quickly go to a couple of scriptures where i want to establish something in your heart and mind first of all go with me to matthew 26 Hallelujah to Jesus. You know, the Christians, you know, we need a mind renewal. Most often when we say covenant people, we automatically think about the Jews. It doesn't even dawn 
in the heart of Christians that they also are covenant people. Most Christians don't know that they have a covenant with God Almighty. When they say covenant people, the only group of people that comes to their mind is the Israelites. Right? So, it's, it's, it, we Christians, we need to train ourselves to think in terms of covenant. We need to become covenant-minded. Hallelujah. That's very important. If you want your prayer life to be powerful, you, you better become covenant-minded. Right? It, it's, it's a very important key. So, let's look at a group of scriptures just to impress upon you that you are a covenant people and that you are com- and uh, it will help you. You know, if you memorize these scriptures, meditate upon them, ponder upon them, you know, pray about them, read them, right? Hallelujah. It will it, help you to become conscious, conscious of your covenant. You know, it will help you become covenant-minded. Uh, verse 27, Matthew 26, 27. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament or New Covenant which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the wine until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. So Jesus is saying that we have a covenant with God Almighty. But our covenant is not based on blood of goats and bulls. No, it is based on the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ himself. Hallelujah. Say this with me, I have a blood covenant with God Almighty based on the blood of my Lord Jesus Christ. One more time. I have a blood covenant with God Almighty based on the blood of my Lord Jesus Christ. Again, I have a blood covenant with God Almighty based on the blood of my Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to Jesus. All right, now, um, let's go to Ephesians chapter 2. Hallelujah to Jesus. Look at verse um, 11 and 12. Wherefore, remember that you being in time past Gentiles in the flesh. This is talking about before you became a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. This is talking about before the time when you made Jesus the Lord of your life. Hallelujah. So, wherefore, remember that you being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. So, uncircumcision are the group of people who don't have a covenant with God. Right? They are referred to as Gentiles in the Bible. Circumcision refers to the Jewish people, the first covenant people. Right? Hallelujah. Alright, verse 12. That at that time you were without Christ. Right? So, this is clearly talking about our situation before we made our Lord Jesus Christ our personal Lord and Savior. Being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. Now, aliens doesn't mean you came from Mars or Venus. It just means that you are a foreigner. Right? If you don't have a covenant, you are a foreigner to the wealth and the privileges and the rights and then the glorious riches of the covenant. Right? Strangers from the covenants of promise. This is important term, stranger. Stranger doesn't mean that this is somebody whom you don't know at all. Now here, stranger means a person who does not have a covenant, who is outside the covenant. Hallelujah. And that's why in in Proverbs, you you would see this by, you know, phrase, strange woman, strange woman, strange woman. Repeatedly, right? What does it mean, strange? It doesn't mean that it's a person whom you have never met or whom you don't know. It it means um, that's a woman to whom you are not married. You don't have a marriage covenant with that person. So since you don't have a covenant of marriage with that person, she is a strange woman. Your wife is not a stranger. You have a covenant, right, with her. So your wife is not a stranger. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. All right, now let's keep reading. Having no hope and without God in the world. So when a person doesn't have covenant, They don't have promise and if you don't have a covenant and a promise, you don't have hope. And obviously you are without God in the world. Notice, even though God made everybody, even though God um, 
uh, helps people, everybody, people whom who know him, who don't know him. He helps everybody to a certain extent, right? We call that a generic grace, right? Something that God does for everybody. Like, you know, our Lord Jesus said, He makes the sun shine upon some people, everybody, right? And uh, the rain fall on everybody. Right? Those are generic graces which are given to everybody. God gives life, breath and all good things to everybody, right? And, um, but then, when you enter into a covenant, that's when you can access the higher blessings. That's when you you become um, qualified to receive greater amount of help, greater grace, greater blessings, and so on. Hallelujah. So, um, verse 13 says, But now, in Christ Jesus, you who sometimes were far off, why were you far off? Because you didn't have a covenant. So, you are like a distant relative, not relative, but distant, <laughs> far off, you know, we use the term distant relative, meaning that these people are not closely related to us. So, when the Bible says far off, forget distant relative, there is no relation at all, you are just far off, right? You who sometimes were far off are made nigh, near by the blood of Christ. Notice, how did we come near to God? Through Christ Jesus, by His blood, right? For he is our peace. Now, this peace is not talking about the peace between us and God. In Colossians, it is talking about peace between us and God. But here it is talking about peace between us and Israel, who has made both one, meaning Israel and the Gentile believers one, and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Hallelujah. I don't want to go into the full detail here. I just wanted to show these passages to you so that you will know that you are a covenant person. Right? Now, I want you to read this entire chapter by yourself. Maybe we'll, we will study this in more detail some other time. But right now, we are not going to go through the entire chapter. Right? Look at verse 19. Now, therefore, you are no more stranger. Why are you not a stranger? Because you, are, you have a covenant. Only if you are outside the covenant, you are a stranger. But now since you have a covenant, you are not a stranger anymore. You are not a foreigner anymore. Why? Because now you have a covenant. You have been made a child of God. You belong to the house. You belong to the family. You are not a foreigner. Hallelujah. But fellow citizens with the saints and the household of God. You belong to the household of God. So as a Christian, you ought to remember that you are also covenant people. So, I am a covenant man. Right? You, you should learn to say that about yourself. Right? I have a blood covenant with God Almighty by the precious and holy blood of my Lord Jesus Christ. Right? Keep saying this over and over again so that it gets inside you and you become conscious of it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Alright, finally I want you to um, look at this scripture also. Go with me to Hebrews. Right. Hallelujah to Jesus. Look at um, here. The Bible is, you know, this entire chapter you will notice. I mean, the entire book actually, this epistle. Um, Paul keeps comparing the Old Testament, Old Covenant, and the New Covenant, right? And uh, also the ministry of our Lord Jesus with the ministry of uh, the priests in the Old Testament. And also the sacrifices of the Old Testament and, and the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ in the New Testament. It's a lot of comparison, right? And uh, here he is saying something very important. Um, let's read from the very first verse so that you, you get this. Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens a minister in the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle which the Lord pitched and not man. So notice how he is talking about us, the born again Christians being in a higher plane than the Jewish people. <laughs> we have a greater high priest. Our high priest is at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heavens. He is sitting there. He is not visiting the holy place once in a year. And like the you know the earthly high priests in the you know, among the Jewish people, right? Now our high priest sitting at the right hand of the Father, 
<laughs> Hallelujah to Jesus. Mm. That's something, you know. In the Old Testament, you, you don't do that. You go there and mostly people, you know, want to finish whatever they're supposed to do there. Right? And then move out quick. They were not, nobody wanted to sit there actually. Right? And sometimes if, if these guys had messed up in the preparations to enter, they were liable to die, you know. They, they could actually die there. Right? But look at the Lord Jesus. He is sitting there. Right? <laughs> As the high priest. At the right hand of the Father. And he is not in a hurry to go anywhere. <laughs> he is not scared. He is not fearful. No. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Verse 2. A minister of the sanctuary of the true tabernacle. Which the Lord pitched, not man. For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices. Wherefore it is, ne it is of necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer. Talking about our Lord Jesus. For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest. Seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law. Who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things. As Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mount. Right? Verse 6. But now has he obtained a more excellent ministry, or Lord Jesus has obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much also Jesus is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. Hallelujah. Say this with me. I have a better covenant based on better promises. Hallelujah. So when we say covenant man, say that's me, right? That's me. I'm a covenant man. Say that with me. He, I, I'm a covenant man. I am a covenant man. I have a better covenant based on better promises. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Now read these three passages, right? Ephesians chapter 2, Hebrews chapter 8, right? And Matthew chapter 26, that particular portion, right? There are a lot. Jesus is, uh, is um, talking about his blood and the new covenant, right? Read these passages repeatedly over and over again. Get this into your heart, into your mind. Know for a surety, without a shadow of doubt, that you are a covenant man. Say that with me again. I am a covenant man. I have a covenant with, the, with God Almighty based on the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Right? Hallelujah. Okay. Now let's go back to Genesis chapter 18. We were looking at this particular prayer by a covenant man. In chapter 17, we see how God um, brought Abraham into a blood covenant with him. Right? And circumcision was given as a token for the covenant. And then here, God actually appears to Abraham and he is talking to him about Sodom and Gomorrah. Hallelujah. And uh, why is he speaking to him about that? Right? That's important. There are multiple reasons, right? Uh, he is a prophet. That's one reason. And also, Abraham is a covenant man. Right? And he is the heir of the world. If you go and read Romans chapter 4, verse 13, uh, Abraham is the heir of the world. And God has given this earth to man. And uh, he, at this point of time, he is the one right only man with this covenant right and his covenant is is an is is a worldwide right covenant generational covenant this covenant is going to usher in uh, the messiah into the earth and through the messiah it's going to bless the entire planet all the families of the earth and that's why god is uh, taking the time to discuss what he's about to do with this man hallelujah can you think about it? <laughs> think upon it, right? God Almighty is discussing his, his thoughts concerning a city to a man. Why? Yeah. Now, remember, you are a child of God. You have a blood covenant with God Almighty. And if you will get serious about these things and you start praying and interceding and fellowshipping and communing, communing with God, He will start showing things to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Right? Remember that. Okay. Now, 
<coughs> let's uh, go to verse 22 this is where he um, abraham be- begins his uh, intercession right now i want you to keep this thought in mind i mentioned this in the previous message but it will help you better to understand um, help you to understand this um, conversation better you, if you keep this thought in mind abraham here particularly he was not interceding that the entire city be spared okay that was not his motive abraham's motive here is to protect lot and his family that's his agenda right that's what he has in mind when he is praying hallelujah hallelujah to jesus it's not that um, you know uh, abraham had this great compassion for sodom and gomorrah and he wanted them to be spared and he wanted a chance for them to repent no not at all you have to understand that context here abraham is particularly focused on protecting lot and his family that's his primary intention because he knows lot is staying there and if sodom and gomorrah get destroyed he knows lot is going to get destroyed together with them lot 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 would have been dead already at the best he would have been a slave in somewhere in babylon you know you know you remember how kedarlaumer came and attacked um, sodom and uh, all the other cities and uh, took them captive basically right abram went and saved him but this fellow he did not understand you know he didn't he, he was so um, moved by money and uh, right business that he moved right back into sodom previously he was outside sodom now he's inside sodom hallelujah and he's somebody who's sitting at the gate meaning he was somebody of prominence there right you understand this right okay keep those thoughts in mind now let's look at verse 22 and the men turned their faces from thence and went towards sodom but abram stood yet before the lord this is important see notice just because god said i'm going i'm going to go and check it out and you know looks like he was going to destroy it abram just didn't sit back and say okay god knows what to do right he is god almighty after all right he knows exactly what to do he's going to do it anyway why would my prayer matter why should i pray about these things if god has made up his mind you know w- w- what's the point man what can i do notice that's not what abraham did abraham understood he has a covenant with god he has a standing with god so he stood before the lord and look at this god did not ignore him god could have said i'm god you are man bus off <laughs> no god actually had respect for a- abraham and he looked at him and said okay you stand still standing here what do you want <laughs> abraham drew near to god and said will thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked who is the righteous he is talking about here lot and his family right if you go on to look at second peter chapter 2 it talks about how a uh, lot was righteous hallelujah now he's the one uh, in the mind of abraham and he says righteous he's particularly focusing on lot right and uh, per adventure there be 50 righteous within the city you know when abraham went went after kedarlaumer he did not go after him for the sake of um, the people of sodom and gomorrah no he only reason he went was because they took lot otherwise he wouldn't have gone he said what's what's my problem he would have sat back right it's important that you keep that thought in your mind verse 24 per adventure there be 50 righteous within the city they also destroy and not spare the place for the 50 righteous that are therein and god said um, uh, even before that verse 25 that be far from thee to do after this manner to slay the righteous with the wicked the righteous should be as the wicked that be far from thee shall not the judge of all the earth do right this is some level of audacity right notice he is being courageous and bold he is not being obnoxious and uh, you know he is not being proud and uh, arrogant and rude thinking too much about himself no right notice how he is approaching god right he is calling him the judge of all the earth and he is pointing out some very important things 
the the righteous and the wicked should not have the same end that's not justice right and that's why he's since he knows that god is the judge of all the earth he is presenting his case he knows that lot is not like those uh, sodomites and you know people living in gomara you know he's not like that and he doesn't want him to have the same end as those people right and uh, so he thought that there would be a lot more righteous people in sodom <laughs> so he begins with 50 right confident you know 50 is not a big number you know right it's it's reasonable <laughs> to assume that even in such a wicked city there would be at least 50 people who who could be called righteous right and that that's that's the assumption with which he starts the prayer and um, god said okay if i find in sodom 50 righteous within the city <laughs> then i'll spare all the place for their sex and abram you know now he is thinking okay maybe, maybe there are not 50 people right and so abram answered and said behold now i have taken upon me to speak unto the lord which am but dust and ashes notice again he is not you know being obnoxious or rude or proud no but he is being bold he is approaching god almighty again right and saying okay let's read negotiate the terms here uh, what if there are only 45 right god says okay if there are 45 i won't destroy it and then he is saying maybe okay 45 okay what about 40 right and then he he keeps negotiating with god you know and finally he comes to a conclusion that there will be at least 10 you know just lot his family maybe you know the, the in laws and you know a couple of people who are influenced by him maybe you know even if there are not 50 at least maybe 10 right so he he stops there 10 and do you know what there were not 10 people also so god according to his word he is going to judge them right and he did but god understood the heart of abraham he knew that abraham was doing this for the sake of lot right so when he was bringing judgment upon uh, the nation i mean the city of sodom uh, this is what the bible says look at this um if you read verse 16 it says the lord being merciful unto him right um verse 16 let's read from the beginning and while he lingered the men laid the angels laid hold upon his hand upon the hand of his wife and upon the hand of his two daughters the lord being merciful unto him they brought him forth and set him without the city outside the city right but then later if you go down a little bit um hallelujah to jesus go to verse 29 it says this and it came to pass when god destroyed the cities of the plain that god remembered abraham and sent lot out of the midst of the overthrow if you notice abraham did not mention lot by name right he mentioned only righteous we know from second peter i think it would be better if you actually see it with your eyes go with me to second peter chapter 2 and look at this uh, peter is particularly talking about this incident verse 6 turning the cities of sodom and gomorra into ashes condemned them with an overthrow making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly and delivered just lot just meaning righteous right and delivered righteous lot vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked for that righteous man say righteous man dwelling among them in seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds so the bible very plainly teaches us that lot was a righteous man hallelujah so god remembered the prayer that um, abraham made right and lot qualified he was righteous right and god knew why abraham was praying so fervently right for the city of sodom and gomorrah and right? it was because of lot so god remembered abraham and sent lot out of the midst of the overthrow why did lot receive this mercy not because he trusted god no a covenant man 
stood before God and pleaded God on his behalf. And God remembered that man, not Lot, but Abraham. God rem- the Bible doesn't say God remembered Lot. The Bible says God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow. Hallelujah. See, this is what you can do for your family, for your relatives, for your city, for your church, for your nation. Hallelujah. You are a covenant man. The name of God is upon you. You are called by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The name of God the Father is upon you. You understand this? You can call upon God. You can stand before God and speak on behalf of your family, on behalf of your city, on behalf of your nation, on behalf of the body of Christ. You can speak to God about the various kingdom plans and God will have respect for you. He will listen to what you have to say. Right? And He will answer your prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Thank you so much for listening. God bless you. Jesus is coming soon.